Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we're going to try and get Philippe Kerman back to the light lander in particular. Uh, space would be good too, just to start off with. Now in order to do this, we don't have enough time to wait for the light lander to be in position or anything like that because there's a limited amount of uh, food, water and oxygen and also electric charge on the Ares Pod G but I think the consumption of electric charge is less when Philippe is on his own in his EVA suit. Um, in any case, of course, we when we turn away from uh, the the vessel, the electric charge does not get tracked anymore, so it's just going to be hard to figure that part out. But food, water, and oxygen-wise, uh, it should be fine. I mean, the pod has like 14 days, and he's got one day in his suit, I think. Um, the light lander actually dips into the atmosphere right now, so what we want to do is we want to launch the Ares Pod G into an orbit, and potentially that might require Philippe completing orbit in his EVA suit, and then the light lander will adjust its periapsis at its apoapsis in order to meet up with him. Uh, that might require other burns, but we'll see. But a timing it is just not going to be very easy because of the limitations of the resources uh, with the pod. So I'm going to turn to it. I have given Philippe the ability to use the repair skill. So hopefully Philippe will be able to take parts off. Uh, I'm just going to give that ability temporarily to the pilots and uh, I'll take it away again later. But uh, we are also going to go with the version that has unbreakable joints, no crash damage, uh, just in case we're tossed up really high. Probably we're going to lose the solar panels, but we're going to potentially have the lander legs still. And uh, I'll go with pause vessel on unpack just in case. And then we're going to, once we get over there, because you can't do the hack gravity ahead of time, um, we'll do hack gravity to right the vessel and then we'll have Philippe take off the parts that he can take off and then we'll see what happens after that. Okay, it goes all sideways, breaks those two, breaks three of the solar panels. Alright, well, I guess we'll have to take it. Um, so I'm going to retract this solar panel. We might just remove that one too, just for balance sake. And then uh, Alt F12, gonna hack gravity for the time being. And let's see if the reaction wheel was powerful enough to get it on its feet that would be super. I don't think it is though. Oh, and that caused it to... Okay, let me turn off RCS right now. Extending the landing legs caused it to bounce up. Just gonna try and set it down. Obviously, we're using a few meters per second here. Um, okay, unhack gravity. Okay. Well, now we are on the ground. Hack gravity is off. All the other things are off. Right. So now, let's see if uh, adding the repair skill really does give Philippe the ability to disassemble parts. Nope, it still says only engineers can disassemble parts, guys. Um, yeah, I think it just says, somewhere it says that disassemble part is just something that engineers can do. But that is not something that that I can change right now, or at least I know where it is. Yeah, let me let me try and make Philippe an engineer and see if that helps. Okay, so I have presumably turned Philippe into an engineer. Let's check. Um, Philippe is now an engineer. Um, hopefully that has worked out. So I guess that's the way we're going to we're going to do this. We, we'll see. Uh, let me turn to him and make sure nothing else goes wrong, and I'll do it the same way that I did last time. <laughs> it just it just starts out sideways, and there goes three of the solar panels. 
There's apparently no other way for it. Okay, so hack gravity. You know, I could have Philippe take stuff off right now. Let's see. Disassemble part. Okay, well it works. And for balance sake, we have to get rid of this. That was a different sort of explosion. Um, let's not do that just yet. I have to think about the landing struts. And maybe it would be a good idea to get rid of them too. Let me get him back in the pod. And the docking port we don't need. We're not going to bother with docking stuff anyway. Um, let me put that in there so that's clear okay so clear 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 and the thing about the landing struts is if we get rid of them we're going to have to make sure that we don't do something well that we're probably going to have to launch with hack grab on just so they can balance on the bottom here waste waste water Lithium hydroxide. Um, every time I try and dump these, it goes overboard. Okay. And then it does that sound issue. Well, I'm going to go away from the craft and come back in order to save us from that sound issue. Yeah. Ah, oh, it wiped out the food water now. Yeah, food and water. Okay, anyway, let me get back to the Space Center. Uh, so annoying. And, uh, TAC Fuel Balancer was mentioned. Maybe I should try that. I don't know if it provides all the functions of Ship Manifest, but it's probably less annoying. Okay. Well, lying on its side, it doesn't want to pop up again. I think it's a landing strut issue. And, uh, the clipping into the terrain thing. I don't know why but whatever. Okay, uh, we have managed to get a lot of extra Delta V, but that's because we dumped our food and water as well accidentally. But I think Philippe can survive for a bit without those. Uh, let me have Philippe EVA. Can he reach down here? Yes. Make sure it's the right one. Okay. And I'm gonna get rid of the landing struts too. Okay, uh, yes, I get perverse pleasure from disassembling parts like this. But I also realize that we're rolling downhill. <laughs> 4,176. That's a fair amount. That's a lot, actually. Maybe exploding those struts was going a bit too far. We'll see. I don't know, I could test whether <laughs> this is weird um... let me try and use the RCS to slow our descent pretty sure it would tip over if I unhack gravity hmm maybe I should leave the landing struts on oh heck let's just go like this for now um, you know what? Let, let me test it. Unhack gravity? Yeah, okay. Uh, flop. Right. Right. Let me hack gravity. So, I don't know. I think that's that's might be going too far. I mean, we'd, we'd get to orbit. In fact, we'd get to orbit without Philippe having to use his EVA pack at all. Well, anyway, let me practice getting to orbit, but I'll restore it and we won't take off the landing struts. I think that'd be better. But I could do with a practice run up to orbit before I restore that. Okay, let's see. Um, let's go. Unhack gravity and do all these things. Okay. Oh, I want the target. Okay.
Ooh, ooh, oh, oh, I'm getting flippy. Ah, uh, well, that's why I need practice. That's not good. Yeah, it needs to be steeper than that. I should have pumped this fuel up. It would be better balanced like that, too. Oh, 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 too far, too far. Okay, we'll shut down there. We've got 1,200 left. And let's see. Well, that will be enough. Oh, I should strip off the parachutes next time. And I forgot about the docking port. Okay, uh, so the point is that we can get to orbit uh, if we strip off the landing legs, but I don't think that stripping off the landing legs is legit because it'll topple over like that. So we are going to not do that. Uh, we'll take off everything else and I'll take off the parachutes and docking port and hopefully that'll be enough if I don't flip during launch to orbit. If not, uh, Fleep can, of course, uh, EVA after that. And the, the question is how long it's going to take to phase with the lunar lander. <laughs> uh, apparently, I'm not entirely sure where the lunar lander is going to be. So, oh, the game's frozen right now. But I'm going to restart it and um, restore the persistent file and uh, once again change Philippe to an engineer so he can do the disassemble part stuff and we will see. Okay, it has happened again exactly the way it happened the previous times. <laughs> ah, okay, and we're on our side and I'm just gonna have Philippe EVA. Let's uh, just assemble that. I have not hacked gravity yet. Okay, and Disassemble that. Um, can I get to the one at the bottom? Yes. Great range on the disassembly, by the way. Come on. Okay, the docking port. Um, forget if the RCS thrusters are attached to it. They sh shouldn't be. I don't think there's a collider on that bit. Right. Uh, parachutes. Uh, let me have him board. I need to move the fuel up. Actually, even without exploding the landing struts, we seem to be pretty well off uh, having gotten rid of the parachutes in particular. I think this is pretty good. And I'm going to move this fuel up as well. I think that'll help our balance. And I mean balance on the way up, not on the ground. It's better to have the fuel low when you're trying to land and stay firm on your feet but not so important during launch. Okay. All right, forward. Okay, so now we've done that. We dump carbon dioxide. I don't know if that will even give us one meter per second. Well, there's one. Two. Two meters per second. Three even. Hey, I'll take it. The wastewater is the uh, water is always the most serious part, and that uh, if I could safely dump the water, that'd be super. Okay, well, okay, I dumped uh, 34 units of water, and I'm gonna take that because it's not making noise right now. So good, we'll we'll go with that. All right, now I'm got Alt F5 even. Philippe self rescue. <laughs> Basically, that's what this is gonna be. Nobody else is gonna come to save him. 
All right. So now we're going to have to use the RCS to write the pod. And I'm just a little bit worried that I'm going to do that wrong somehow. And I'll actually activate gravity before launching. I think I've got enough delta V margin to make that possible. Okay, so bring in the landing gear. Okay, all of 12 at gravity. Uh, RCS on. A firm footing here. Unhack gravity. Okay, so we've read the pod without, and and now I can launch like this with. Uh, let me undo the other. So it's a clean launch. So the only thing that I've actually done to help this situation is hack gravity to write the pod because we did land upright. So it was just a glitch causing us to land sideways. Not like the glitch causing that pole to just stay there. Um, and then give the Philippe the ability to remove parts. And that's about it. So I think that's a satisfactory way to go. And now it's just down to me not messing up the launch. Part of the problem is that we're actually pointed in the wrong direction. We need to be pointed towards 90. We're currently pointed towards 270 because of the slope. Okay. We're going to target our target. Now it's over here. Uh, well, anyway. Um, and we're going to see what we can do. Alright. Here goes nothing. Links in. I really don't want to flip this time. Let me throw down. Still not the best launch profile I could have imagined. Okay, we should just go in line. I think 1.3 degrees is as low a relative inclination as I can manage. Okay, well, 140 is quite enough. Let's see, we've got 1,500 meters per second left. And it'll be enough. But perhaps we should give some thought as to our phasing with the target. It's not great right now. We have some delta V left, but we don't have. Uh, it's just the electric charge is really a pain right now. If you work it out, we really don't have enough electric charge. Kernels can also survive for a while without electric charge, so that's true. And especially since we have Philip in the pod, I, I'll check exactly how long they have without electric charge before they die. I'll, that's in TAC life support. But even though my heart is still heavy on this, we have managed to get him back to orbit. Or he's managed to get himself back to orbit. Stripping enough parts off of this. And that is orbit. Okay, so let me pause this and l let me quickly check TAC life support. And it says max time without electricity is 2,000. Uh, no, 259,200. I don't know if uh, if that is changed by realism overhaul, but that means 72 hours. So actually. Philippe would be able to survive for 72 hours without electricity in this capsule by default with uh, TAC life support. Now, if realism overall changes that, I don't know. So actually, this is legit, which makes me feel a little bit better. So it is legitimately possible with realism overhaul, even if it was keeping track of the electric charge properly, uh, for Philippe to survive in this capsule while we are phasing with the light lunar la uh, light lander not lunar lander light lander okay 2000 meters per second to use here now once we get him uh, the there's still another vehicle that we can use to help out and that's the the um, fuel depot 
the UDMH depot. Well, we'll be able to see it during the burn anyway. Oh, and actually we can just quickly... Is this the better place to do the... Yes, this is the best place to make the inclination adjustment. So let's do that first. Part of the problem with the Ares Pod G is just that it was consuming more, electric, uh, more electric charge than it ought to. So... Because the Gemini capsule is only supposed to consume two, two kilowatts. That's all its fuel cells. That's the max its fuel cells could generate. It probably actually consumed less than that. Because you want redundancy. And the fuel cells generated two kilowatts in total. Now I don't think rushing it like that will be very helpful. Especially since I've now established that the Kerbal could survive for three days without the electric charge so let's not rush in a way that's going to cause problems our current orbital period is 3 hours and 15 minutes we should be able to rendezvous after we get to periapsis we can drop our orbit and manage manage to phase with it Okay, that should be good enough on the periapsis. Now let's do some plotting. Okay, I've plotted a maneuver at uh, at periapsis for 275.6 meters per second, and it says that we can actually rendezvous with Philippe in four hours. So that's excellent. I mean, um, if we saw the solar panels on the pod, I think that it wouldn't even have run out of electric charge. At, in that time so I think this is good and we'll use 500 for that altogether after matching speeds so we'll still have 1500 left over it occurs to me I'm not entirely sure what good pilots are in RP0 because you know I mean we launched off the surface I didn't use smart ASS or anything for the launch and with Philippe as an engineer it didn't really cause any problems did it because we had the other controller on, and we generally do have another controller on this pod too. We have an, a Gina core. So, hmm. <laughs> um, pilots are fairly useless altogether, it would seem. I mean, the, the, the thing is, of course, in real life, the test pilots were had engineering background. It's not like they wouldn't have been able to do some basic stuff, even welding and such. Heck, you don't even need to be an engineer to do welding and use a drill or whatever you need to do to get parts off. Okay, let's use RCS for the rest. Seems like 4.3 kilometers is as good as I'm going to get. Okay. But that's pretty good. Time to close this approach. 2 hours and 17 minutes. I really should have made sure that we were oriented properly to the sun. I'm, I doubt I am right now. No, actually, it's not bad. Now, there's no docking port on the Aries Pod G, so we'll just match velocities with it and have Philippe EVA over. Thankfully, there doesn't need to be any sort of weird EVA, as I planned in the previous episode. Turns out those parachutes and that docking board were heavier than I thought they were. Especially the parachutes are probably really heavy and and that's why we were able to get the extra delta V we needed. When it comes right down to it, these uh, light landers are the heroes. Actually, this one. The other one didn't do anything because it didn't have. Uh, it was missing one solar panel. But this one has been quite the hero. Landed on Deimos. Landed on Phobos many times, each, each of them many times, and now is instrumental in this rescue. So yeah, if you're planning a Mars mission of your own, maybe send a few of these out. <laughs> Something like this. Just in case. In the future, we might uh, just make the whole taking off parts off the Ares Podgy. The parachute, well, the thing is, I wanted it to be reusable. That's why I wanted the parachutes to stay on. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll figure it out. It can be improved. 
I think it needs more of a fully conic shape than a cone and then a box. I mean, not box, a cylinder. Making a full cone would be better. There are complications with that. Then there's a reason it had this shape, but we'll see. Okay, I think we're close enough for for the EVA here. So yes, this was more of a boots on the ground sort of Mars mission. But at least it wasn't a Kerbal stuck on the ground Mars mission. Okay, he is in. We've got some serious electric charge consumption. Well, I mean, but uh, a lot of that will go away once we are back in daylight. So, set Marsport 1 as our target. And uh, maneuver there. Technically, we have enough uh, Delta V for this approach. So we're going to boost higher than the station first and then bring it back down again to rendezvous over here. It says 12 kilometers. I We could probably manage better than that if we aim for it. That's 5.6 and combined our burns will be about well less than 1,200 so that works. And that'll be in 6 hours when we actually arrive at the station. So all in all um, all of this will have happened in a day, in a Mars day or an Earth day. In fact, uh, substantially less than a day. Seems like a lot longer in real life. <laughs> it's been quite, uh, quite an episode. Well, a number of episodes. Okay, so we'll do this burn, even though we're, you know we're going up first in order to hasten it. We're trying to rush it basically and we're using Delta V to do that. But that's safer because you know still our electric charge situation is tenuous. Food, water, and oxygen is fine. Okay we will be burning away from Aries Pod G. Selling the fuel down and let's just go with orbit for now. Ignition. Okay, let's take a look at that closest, closest approach distance. Okay. Nope, nope, too far, too far. It's very touchy. That's because we're trying to hit it at one of the nodes, ascending or descending, I forget. Okay, 4.4 kilometers. Okay. And what does it say out here? It says we need 273.6 meters per second when we get there, and we will have it. So let's go. And we will have plenty of electric charge once we get there. Okay. Towards the target, please. 300 meters per second to spare. That certainly will be enough to dock. Let me just make sure I don't make any silly mistakes at this point. Marsport 1 is also a great thing. I'm certainly glad we've sent something like that over here. Retracting the panels now so that we don't destroy them by bumping them into something. I mean Marsport 1 and this uh, light lander are just going to hang out here and be reusable. So we can take advantage of them. Just send more fuel and supplies, of course. It's a pretty good deal. Marsport 1 took a full Saturn V-ish launcher. This did not. This uh, required much less, of course. So yeah, I'm just going to keep Philippe as an engineer. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's for the best. He's certainly earned his stripes, as far as that's concerned. Okay, that's us lined up. Double check that we are controlling from the docking port. And how we are approaching this. Mm. K. 
Okay, now that is a uh, propellant only docking port on the tail there. But I think we should dock off to the side instead. Be easier to approach the one on the tail. But worse for balance for the station. Okay, preparing to dock. Approaching at 0.5 meters per second. Yep, wandering. App docked. All right, Philippe is back with Newcast. A slight change to his vocation, but everything is looking good. We are uh, we are recharging. Our station is properly poised towards the sun. And yeah, I'll I'll leave the Aries Pod G where it is right now. I think it might have enough delta V to deorbit, and it does still have its own controller, so it's possible to deorbit it. It's not going to have electric charge for very long. Uh, actually, it probably should have run out by now. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, I don't know what you think of all this, uh, but I was sort of glad to have this little adventure. I would have been very disappointed with this whole Mars experience if there wasn't something like this. I didn't think it would be as close a parallel to the Martian as it ended up being. It's not exactly. Of course, we didn't grow potatoes, but you know, you know what I mean. Uh, so, yeah. And I have learned that we should just carry engineers. <laughs> we should just carry engineers. There's, there's no reason. We've got, we've got controllers on basically everything except for the, uh, Ares Pod A. I think this, um, uh, uh, we have a decoupler there. I don't think we have a separate controller. We, so we'll need at least one pilot for that. But otherwise, um, the vehicles all have their own controllers the Agena here. So yeah, I think I've come to that decision that uh, certainly sending two pilots was not a good idea and sending an engineer to the surface is mandatory. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.